The Zelda timeline, one of the most controversial topics of the Zelda series, has been a subject of debate since the early days of the franchise. For many years, fans from across the world have tried to piece together their own versions of the timeline, based on their own interpretations, trying to make a cohesive story by stitching together the games, often resulting in lengthy debates and disagreements. With the release of Hyrule Historia, Nintendo revealed a timeline of events where they placed the games in a chronological order which, rather than end the debates, fueled them even more, as much of the information within the books, as well as the placements of the games within the timeline, were, to many, wrong and contradictory to the established lore in the games and their manuals, while others accepted the timeline as the definitive chronology of the series. Things only worsened with the release of Hyrule Encyclopedia where two games swapped places with one another, those being Link's Awakening and the Oracle Duology, sparking even more debates on the true placement of the Oracle games. However, the writers of the book mention that the timeline is subject to changes, and as new discoveries are uncovered, the timeline may change completely once again. Harold Encyclopedia even states that were necessary, the writers of the books added their own interpretations and expanded upon the game's stories and that events described here are subject to revision. In fact, Aonuma himself has stated that while they have released a timeline, they rather move from it as it limits their creativity, and he is of the opinion that it's up to the players to debate and imagine the order of events. Which brings us to today's video. Joined by Lorena Historian and with the help and research of Instrutilus, we believe to have crafted the ultimate Zelda timeline, using in-game information, as well as developer interviews and the manuals of the games. A timeline which fixes every inconsistency and errors presented in Hero Historia and Hero Encyclopedia that contradict the games themselves. In order to begin, the best way to put together the timeline of events of the games is to start at the beginning, not chronologically, but in order of release, but we're going to structure this video in a very specific way, in order to better explain this timeline. First, the mainline games, those that aren't direct sequels to the games in the series, like The Adventure of Link being the sequel to the original Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening being the sequel to A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask being the sequel to Ocarina of Time, or Phantom Hourglass being the direct sequel to Wind Waker. And also the Ransing Conflicts, those that take place between the games, only mentioned but never played through, like the Trifles War, the Great Flood, or the Steel War. Secondly, the direct sequels, those that we know take place after the mainline games as direct continuations, oftentimes having the same hero, as well as the Ramsing Conflicts. Thirdly, the Oracle subseries, developed by Capcom, and finally, the Four Swords Trilogy and the Ramsing Conflicts, developed by Capcom and Nintendo. With that out of the way, let's begin with the video. On February 21st, 1986, Nintendo released the first game of the series we would come to know as The Legend of Zelda. The premise of the game, while simple, laid the foundations of the future games to come. It established the Kingdom of Hyrule, the evil boar-like Demon King Ganon as the main antagonist, the green-clad Link as the hero of Hyrule, Zelda as the princess of the kingdom, Impa as her caretaker, and two pieces of the Triforce. The Triforce of Power, stolen by Ganon when he invaded the small kingdom of Hyrule before the game's events, and the Triforce of Wisdom, divided by Zelda into eight fragments hidden within perilous labyrinths that Link would have to traverse throughout his quest to find. The timeline would therefore consist of two major events, Ganon's invasion and Link's quest to obtain the Triforce and save Princess Zelda. A Link to the Past, known in Japan as Trifles of the Gods, 
released on November 21st, 1991. This game was set long before the original Legend of Zelda, in an era where Hyrule was still one country, although how far back was not known at the time. As the game took place during the era when Hyrule was still one country, it is believed that early in development, this game would have been telling the events around the time of the King of Hyrule who hid the travels of courage before the events of the Avenger of Link, as Aghanim, the antagonist of the game, closely resembled the magician described in the manual of the Avenger of Link. However, this idea would later evolve into its own story, with those events told in the manual of the Avenger of Link taking place an unknown amount of time later. It is in this game that the law was finally beginning to be set in place. We learned of the creation of Hyrule by the three gods of power, wisdom and courage, and how it was they who created the Trifles, a set of three triangles which upheld the order of the world, which could grant any wish to whomever laid their hands upon it. We learned of the origin of Ganon, once being a man named Ganondorf, the leader of a band of thieves who found by accident the entrance to the home of the Trifles, the Sacred Realm and took control of the full trifles, becoming the demon king Ganon upon making a wish onto the sacred relic. We learned of the sealing war between Ganon's forces and the combined strength of the sages and the knights of Hyrule, that took place centuries before the events of A Link to the Past, leading to Ganondorf's banishment to the now corrupted sacred realm, the Dark World, and of a sacred blade known as the Mask Sword, created long ago by the people of Hyrule to protect the trifles from those who want to kidnap it enshrined deep within the mysterious Lost Woods, said to only be wielded by a hero descended from the Knight's clan, a hero which the sages looked for to aid in the struggle to no avail. The timeline would then look like so, with the events of A Link to the Past taking place long before the Lane of Zelda, with the Sealing War taking place centuries before A Link to the Past, Ganondorf obtaining the Triforce sometime before the Sealing War, the creation of the Master Sword an unknown time before the Sealing War, and the creation of the world and the Triforce at the hands of the gods. Ocarina of Time, released on November 21st, 1998, was described to be a prequel to The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. However, complications arose when comparing the story of both games. You see, early on in Ocarina of Time's development, the game's story went through numerous changes. The project originally began as a 3D remake of The Adventure of Link, using the same engine used for Super Mario 64. However, the idea soon changed instead to a sequel to The Adventure of Link, which quickly evolved to become a prequel of A Link to the Past, said to focus on the events of the imprisoning war detailed in the game's manual. This was known as Zelda 64. And while similar to the game we have today, it had many glaring differences which closely tied it to A Link to the Past, such as how the Zora were originally going to look and act more like the ones from the previous games, before they decided Ruto would be a sage and a friendly NPC, or how Ganondorf would be in his demon form throughout the future portion of the game. However, as development progressed, the original idea to have this game tell the story of the Imprisoning War soon began to shift, and many elements drastically changed to where they contradicted the events established by A Link to the Past backstory, to the point that they wouldn't be able to even be the same conflict. Yet, while they're different, they retained the influence and similarities of that conflict. In the manual of A Link to the Past, it was revealed that Ganondorf and his band of thieves opened the entrance to the sacred land by accident, and began to fight each other as they raced towards the sacred relic. After Ganondorf slaughtered them all, he touched the trifles with his bloodstained hands and made a wish, transforming into the demon King Ganon and twisting the sacred realm into the dark world, thus obtaining the trifles. There he stayed, slowly luring greedy people with his power and transforming them into demons to build an army to one day invade Hyrule. However, in Ocarina of Time, this plays out vastly different. Ganondorf is revealed to be the king of the Gerudo, said to be a race of thieves, which correlates to the manual. However, Ganondorf isn't the one who opens the entrance to the sacred realm, but rather the hero of time, after he carefully manipulated the boy into pulling the master sword, thus it wasn't found by accident. In fact, Ganondorf had the knowledge on how to open the gateway to the sacred land, 
as he was actively seeking out the spiritual stones guarded by the three races of the world, as well as Princess Zelda, who guarded the Ocarina of Time, instruments needed to open the Gate of Time. Once Ganondorf entered the Sacred Realm, which appears to be by himself, he finds the Trifles. However, instead of obtaining the full relic, it splits into three pieces due to his unbalanced heart. The Trifles of Power remain with the power hungry Ganondorf, and the other two pieces, those being the Trifles of Wisdom and the Trifles of Courage, came into the possession of those chosen by Destiny, the wise Princess Zelda of Hyrule and the courageous hero of time, Link. While the Sacred Realm became a world of evil as described by Rauru, with the only entrance saved from the corruption being the Temple of Light, Ganondorf used the Travels of Power to take over Hyrule during the seven years the Hero of Time remained in stasis after pulling the Master Sword, rather than remaining within the Sacred Realm to grow an army of demons and later invade Hyrule, resulting in the Sealing War. The Manual of Link to the Past mentions that, after Ganondorf obtained the Triforce, many sinister things began to occur, and when Ganondorf invaded Hyrule and attacked the Royal Palace, the King of Hyrule ordered the Sages to find the Master Sword and a hero to use it, but they were unsuccessful. There was no hero to wield the Master Sword and combat against Ganon. In Ocarina of Time, however, the Hero of Time, a hero who found the Master Sword under Princess Zelda's instructions, was present, leading to Ganondorf obtaining the Triforce, and was the one who later awakened the Sages and defeated the Evil King, aided by the Sages. Rather than the Sages seeking the hero like they did in the backstory of A Link to the Past, in Ocarina of Time, it was the hero seeking the Sages. It is possible, however, that Link existed during the Sealing War, but never awoke as a hero, instead becoming a Knight of Hyrule and fighting against Ganon alongside the Sages and the other Knights, without wielding the Master Sword, never being recognized as the Hero of Time, instead one of the many Knights of Hyrule who laid their lives to protect the Kingdom. While the events of both Ocarina of Time and the backstory of A Link to the Past varied drastically, Ocarina of Time introduced new elements of lore which enhanced the story of A Link to the Past even more. The gods who created Hyrule were given names, those being Din, Nehru, and Faerol, with the story of creation being retold by the Great Deku Tree exactly as it was in the manual. We were introduced to the Sheikah, the race which Impa, Silas Caretaker, belongs to as well as the history of their tribe, such as how they once lived in Kakariko village and they performed espionage and assassinations from the shadows by orders of the royal family. We were also introduced to races such as the Kokiri of the forest, protected by the Deku Tree, the Gerudo of the desert, the tribe that Ganondorf belongs to, known by Hylians as thieves and murderers, as well as the rock-like Gorons of Death Mountain. With the line from the manual of A Link to the Past describing the graves of the mountain people, perhaps now referring to the Gorons themselves, mountain people who were completely absent in A Link to the Past, perhaps indicating that they died out. Ocarina of Time also introduced a conflict that preceded its events, known simply as a fierce war, a war waged between the many races of Hyrule, sparked for unknown reasons which resulted in the unification of Hyrule under the Hyrulean royal family. It is during this conflict that a Hylian mother, fatally wounded, escaped from the fires of war and fled into the Kokiri forest, where she entrusted the care of her baby to the great Deku Tree before her passing. This baby was Link, the hero of time. As Link was a baby when the war was taking place, the fierce war took place merely a few years before Ocarina of Time. And since we have confirmation of Shigeru Miyamoto that Link was 9 years old at the start of Ocarina of Time, this means that the Fierce War took place 9 years before Ocarina of Time. Because of the many changes to the story, Ocarina of Time and the continuity of A Link to the Past will be separated, with Ocarina of Time and the events of the Sealing War being parallel events to each other in their respective realities, both having similar yet different events. But Ocarina would still be a prequel to A Link to the Past, in the sense that it takes place before its events but just on a different reality. As in Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf obtained the Triforce when Link was a child, and was sealed by Link and the Sages seven years later. It is theoretically possible that in A Link to the Past continuity, Ganondorf, after obtaining the Triforce, waited seven years in the Dark World as he lured people into his corrupted domain, and amassed an army of demons big enough to then launch an assault on Hyrule, 
and we learn that catastrophes began to befall Hyrule one by one after Ganondorf obtained the Triforce and before the Sealing War. This could have perfectly been seven long years, similar events playing roughly during the same time in different timelines. There's also something interesting I'd like to point out. When developing Ocarina of Time, which was originally intended to be the Sealing War, Nintendo wanted each of the stages to be named after a town from the Avenger of Link, so that it seemed that the towns of that game were named after them. With this in mind, and all the information previously established, it is only logical to conclude that the stages who existed during the Sealing War were the same stages from Ocarina of Time, just in a different reality, despite the artwork from A Link to the Past depicting them as Hylians. Nintendo themselves made the sages different races, so this can be explained as both a retcon as well as the people of Hyrule misremembering the events as they become legend, imagining the sages as Hylians, and only remembering them by name, not by race or appearance. In fact, in an interview with Famitsu, Shikata and Anuma revealed that sage descendants aren't necessarily blood related, instead people of Hyrule who have the aptitudes to be chosen. This, however, does not necessarily mean that Sage Descendants can't be blood related. They most definitely can, but they can also not be related by blood. This would mean that the Maidens from A Link to the Past may not be blood descendants, but merely inherited the powers of the Sages, regardless of their race. As an extra and rather obvious point, the existence of the Master Sword in Ocarina of Time means it was forged in its history's past as well. And since we aren't told any differing information in regards to its origin, its origin would be the same as in A Link to the Past Manual, being created by the people of Hyrule at the request of the gods. We'll see how this origin holds out as we move forward with the timeline. The timeline up to this point would therefore look like this, with Ocarina of Time's present and future eras being parallel to Ganondorf obtaining the full Triforce and the Sealing War respectively therefore having the Sealing War take place seven years after Ganondorf obtains the full Triforce. Then, the Fierce War will take place nine years before Ocarina of Time, and the forging of the Master Sword an unknown amount of time prior to that war, and finally, the creation of the world at the hands of the Golden Goddesses, all events being parallel to one another with their distinct differences. On December 13th, 2002, the next mainline game of the series, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, released, set several hundreds of years after the events of Ocarina of Time. The Wind Waker continues the story of the future Hyrule following the defeat of Ganondorf and Link being sent back to his own time. An unknown amount of time later, Ganondorf escaped his seal and ravaged the land of Hyrule, and as people expected the Hero of Time to save them, he didn't return. In their desperation, they turned to the gods for help, who answered by flooding the kingdom in an event known as the Great Flood. Centuries after this event, the survivors continued to live up on top of the once mountains of Hyrule, now islands scattered across the Great Sea, and the great kingdom of Hyrule faded into legend. The placement is clear. It's been several hundred years after the events of Ocarina of Time, but we can take this a step further and actually figure out a rough estimate of how many centuries are between the Great Flood and the Wind Waker, and the key to that lies on Windfall Island. On the peaceful island of Windfall, there's a gentleman dancing in front of a gravestone, a gravestone that reads, A Great Artist, 831 to 894. This tells us that Wind Waker is set, at least, in the year 894. The great artist was the father of that dancer. So then, what was year zero? It must have been a pretty important event in Hyrule's history to be the start of its calendar, right? Well, we believe this year to be the foundation of the kingdom of Hyrule itself, the birth of its monarchy that ruled Hyrule for years to come. Now, we played with the idea of the Great Flood being year zero, with the Hylians changing their calendars after the Great Flood. But realistically, they wouldn't change their calendars. 
In real life, we don't change our calendars because of devastating wars. The last time a calendar was changed was from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar, as it incorrectly counted dates. So this would mean that from the birth of Hyrule Kingdom all the way up to the Wind Waker, there has been at least 894 years. As for the time between the end of Ocarina and Ganon's re-emergence, which caused the Great Flood, as the people expected the Hero of Time to return, not many years must have passed since he left. People still remembered the Hero and fully expected him to return upon the return of Ganon. One would think that Daphnis Nohansen Hyrule was the king that Ganondorf pledged his loyalty to in Ocarina of Time, with Princess Zelda from Ocarina of Time being his daughter. But Ganondorf did away with the king during his takeover. Ganondorf wouldn't have let the king of Hyrule live. That's not something he does, especially if he intends on taking over the kingdom. King Daphnis Nohansen Hyrule can't be the father of Princess Zelda from that era. Instead, he's most likely a descendant of Ocarina of Time Zelda. And since the people expected the hero to return, and some beings, like the Great Deku Tree, even knew him directly, it's safe to say that the Flood must have taken place not long after the events of Ocarina, maybe a century later at most. As King Daphnis tells us, the gap between the Great Flood and the events of the Wind Waker are several hundred years. Several being defined as more than two, but not many. This would place a time gap between the Great Flood and Wind Waker at about 300-ish years. So, with the addition of the Wind Waker, the timeline would look like so, with the Great Flood taking place a hundred or so years after Ocarina of Time, and the Wind Waker taking place about 300 years after the events of the Great Flood. On December 2nd, 2006, Nintendo released the next mainline title, The Lane of Zelda Twilight Princess, taking place years after Ocarina of Time, only this time in a timeline where Link was sent back to by Princess Zelda at the end of Ocarina of Time. After being sent back in time, Link went to see the young Princess Zelda and told her of everything Ganondorf would do in the future. This conversation stopped Ganondorf's plans for Hyrule's domination and eventually led to his failed execution years later, which forced the sages to seal him away within the Twilight Realm, the World of Shadow after Ganondorf broke free from his shackles and murdered the Sage of Water, as he, by some divine prank, had come into the possession of the Travels of Power. This execution, being years later, could perfectly be parallel to both the Sealing War, as well as the future events of Ocarina of Time, being set seven years in the future, as all three events are characterized with Ganon being sealed away by the Sages the seal wall having the sages seal Ganon in the Dark World, the events of future Ocarina of Time having the sages seal Ganon in the Dark World, and Ganon's execution having the sages seal Ganon in the Shadow World, comparable to the Dark World. Aonuma confirmed in an interview that Twilight Princess took place canonically a hundred and some years after Ocarina of Time. Not much time passed between Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess as the deceased King of the Soras was confirmed to be the same King Dobon XVI from Ocarina of Time, Ruto's father, and now late husband of Queen Rutella, making Prince Rales Princess Ruto's stepbrother. This becomes even clearer as this Sora King knew a hero during his lifetime, the Hero of Time, crafting a Sora armor to be worn by the coming hero, his successor. In Breath of the Wild, we know of Sora who are around 100 years old and they look like adults, having been children 100 years earlier. This makes sense as the Sora are long lived, having an estimated lifespan of roughly 300 to 400 years based on information from Breath of the Wild. At around 200 years old, Sora are fully grown adults. King Sora was a fully grown adult by Ocarina of Time, so he would be at least 200 years old, perhaps older. As we learned that 100 years before the Great Calamity, King Dorifan ascended to the throne, so he must have been already an adult past 100 years when he became king. Queen Rutella looks young during Twilight Princess. She's clearly not an elderly Zora, 
She's therefore much younger than the King Zora from Ocarina of Time, who has, by now, deceased of old age. The question, then, is where's Ruto? She should have been alive during Twilight Princess due to her long lifespan, yet she's completely absent, with Rutella, her stepmother, and Rallus, her stepbrother, being the only Zora royalty present. We don't think it's a coincidence that the Water Sage was murdered during Ganondorf's execution. The answer seems obvious. The sages we meet in Twilight Princess must be the same sages from Ocarina of Time, with Ruto, the Sage of Water, being brutally murdered by Ganondorf during his execution. These same people we meet in Ocarina of Time would be destined to become sages in all three timelines, just under different circumstances. For the case of the sages in the Child timeline, they would likely be appointed as sages by the King of Hyrule in an official ceremony after hearing from the Hero of Time how they aided him in defeating and sealing Ganon in the future. This would likely be done in a grand ceremony reminiscent of the champion ceremony that we see in Breath of the Wild, where each of the sages would have been bestowed sacred gowns and masks unifying them, garbs we would see them wearing in Twilight Princess. Also, since we know Ganondorf invaded Hyrule years later, after Link warned the royal family, and the legend of the temples was passed down by the Sheikah, which mentions that the sages would awaken when the world is ruled by evil, they would inevitably awaken, and therefore Ruto, Darunia, Naburu, Saria, Impa, and the already Sage of Light, Raru, would become the sages we see in Twilight Princess. As for a link to the past, we also know it took place centuries after the Seal War, but we don't have a clear way of knowing how many. We do, however, consider it taking place after the events of Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker in its own timeline, as the Temple of Time in Twilight Princess seemed to be in a semi-ruined state, a transitional state between the Temple of Time we saw in Ocarina of Time and the pedestal of the Master Sword in A Link to the Past. As we discussed previously with characters existing in all timelines, such as the Sages from Ocarina of Time or the Hero of Time, only not being a hero, likely being a member of the Knights of Hyrule during the Steel War, we don't find it likely that two incarnations of the hero would exist simultaneously during the same time, those being the Hero of Legend from A Link to the Past, the Hero of Twilight from Twilight Princess, and the Hero of Winds from The Wind Waker. It would exist during their own respective time, having parallel versions of themselves in all timelines, who may or may not become heroes in their respective timelines. We also learn from the Light Spirit Laneru that long ago, a war broke out in the sacred land of Hyrule for the possession of the mystical trifles. After rumors of its ability to grant any wish desired spread across the land like wildfire, it is then that a group of sorcerers who excelled at sorcery appeared and subdued anyone who stood in their way with the use of an artifact of their making called the Fused Stone of Shadow. The threat they posed to the kingdom was such that the gods themselves sent the light spirits to seal away their magic, and they were then chased across Hyrule and banished into the world of shadow, where they eventually became the Twilight People. We learned in Ocarina of Time that Raru built the Temple of Time to protect the entrance to the Sacred Realm after it was sealed, presumably following the war. And in Twilight Princess, we also learned that the ancestors of the Hylians, also known as the Uka, built the Temple of Time. It was likely a collaborative process between this ancient race and the sages. We also learn in Twilight Princess of the prolonged wars where the Sheikah perished long ago. This is really interesting, as in Ocarina of Time, we also learn that the Sheikah were thought to have long been gone, perished in a war before Ocarina of Time, with the only known war before that period being referred to as the Fierce War where all of Hyrule quarreled for an unknown reason which resulted in the unification of the kingdom by its king. It's clear, isn't it? The Fierce War and the Triforce War are the same conflict. A war that sparked when rumors of the Triforce and its powers to grant wishes began to spread. A war that was prolonged for centuries which resulted in the eradication of the Sheikah tribe and the division of the nation. A war where a group of interlopers who excelled at sorcery rose up and attempted to use their magic to control the sacred realm, which resulted in their banishment to the Twilight Realm, 
the sealing of the sacred realm and the construction of the Temple of Time by the Seven Sages, Rauru among them, with the help of the Uka, by orders of the royal family of Hyrule, with the fighting being prolonged for centuries until the Hylian king of Ocarina of Time unified the nation under the Hylian banner. With the addition of Twilight Princess, the timeline would look like so, with Twilight Princess taking place a hundred and something years after Ocarina of Time, likely being parallel to the Great Flood, with Ganondorf's invasion and field execution taking place a century or so prior to Twilight Princess, parallel to the Sealing War and the adult era of Ocarina of Time, being sealed by the Sages in a dark world in all three, with said execution taking place seven years after the conversation between Link and Zelda, and the prolonged wars, sparking long before Ocarina of Time, which began with the Triforce War, leading to the banishment of the interlopers in the Twilight Realm, and the sealing of the Triforce in the Second Realm with the construction of the Temple of Time, and ending many centuries later with a fierce war, shortly before the start of Ocarina of Time, where Link was entrusted into the care of the Deku Tree by his mother, and the kingdom was unified into one country by the King of Hyrule. On December 23rd, 2009, Nintendo released the Lane of Zelda Spirit Tracks, set 100 years after the events of the Wind Waker, following the establishment of New Hyrule after they set sail to new lands. Of the original cast of characters we were introduced to in Wind Waker, only Nico, the youngest of the pirate crew, remained as an old man, with all the other characters who resembled their past iterations being the descendants. The placement of this game could not be clearer, a hundred years after the Wind Waker in the adult timeline. On November 23, 2011, Skyward Sword released on the Nintendo Wii. This game is set long, long before the events of Ocarina of Time, where the origin of the Master Sword is explored. We learn of the goddess Hylia, a divine spirit who was entrusted with the care of the Triforce by the creator goddesses Din, Nehru, and Feror following the creation of the world, and how one fateful day, the earth cracked open wide, unleashing legions of demons led by the Demon King Demise, the source of all evil. This war was the earliest known conflict in Hyrule's history, the origin of the demons and evil as a whole in Hyrule, and ended with the imprisonment of Demise, and with Hylia renouncing her divinity to be reborn as a mortal to one day use the Triforce against Demise knowing his seal would not last forever. And as no god could use the Triforce by decree of the old gods, Hylia was reborn into the first Zelda, whose family would continue in the series carrying on the blood of the goddess, as well as using their family crest. We also learn by the end that Demise is the precursor to Ganon, who would be an incarnation of his hatred, born from the eternal curse of the demon tribe a curse that would follow those with the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero for all time. But despite Skyward Sword being the origin of the Master Sword, both A Link to the Past and Twilight Princess told us origin stories for the Master Sword before the release of this game. The manual of A Link to the Past tells us that the gods ordered the people of Hyrule to create a sword to defend the Triforce, while Zelda in Twilight Princess as well as the Master Sword's description, tells us it was created by the ancient sages. As I went over in my video the true creator of the Master Sword, I believe a set of sages existed during the time of Goddess Hylia, as evidenced by their emblems being found on the ceiling of the Temple of Hylia, surrounding a depiction of the Triforce, and it was they, being people of Hyrule, at the time the land being known as Hylia, who by orders of Goddess Hylia, forged the Goddess Sword, which would later be tempered by the hero into the Master Sword. It is abundantly clear that this game is the earliest tale in the series, and since it details the origin of the Master Sword, which appears both in Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past, it must come before both of them, meaning the timeline must split. However, despite the time travel events presented in Skyward Sword, there is no indication of a timeline split, 
even when there theoretically should be, when Link defeats the reborn demise in the long distant past. However, the present time has both the Master Sword laid to rest in the past, as well as the Trifles and the Isle of the Goddess in the sealed grounds, brought down to crush the imprisoned demise, which shouldn't exist as the mice was defeated and sealed within the Master Sword in the past. Despite the impossibility of the time travel in Skyward Sword, which I go into much more detail in my video about the impossible time travel in Skyward Sword, the ending of the game is a single timeline. Skyward Sword therefore cannot cause a timeline split. This means that sometime after the events of Skyward Sword, and before the events of Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past, there must have been a timeline split stemming off from a shared history. But since we, at this point in the video, currently don't have enough information to determine what could cause such a split, Skyward Sword and its events will be placed before Ocarina of Time, with alternate events happening at the same time before A Link to the Past and the Civil War. We will reconcile these events into a unified timeline later on in the video. On December 26, 2013, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, a sequel to A Link to the Past, its Japanese name being Triforce of the Gods 2. The game is set long after the events of A Link to the Past, and by extension Link's Awakening, featuring new incarnations of our hero and princess, with those from A Link to the Past being mentioned repeatedly by numerous characters as well as their story being narrated through a series of paintings in Hyrule Castle, with slight alterations to the lore. Let's analyze the legend. This is a tale that's handed down in the Kingdom of Hyrule. A very long time ago, there were three sacred triangles called the Trifles located in the kingdom known as Hyrule. The Trifles is said to have been bestowed by the gods, and it is believed to grant the desires of whoever touches it. The people quarreled endlessly, trying to acquire this power. Thus, Haru Kingdom raged, and the royal family grieved. So, they assembled the seven sages, who concealed the Trifles in a sacred realm. But the notorious thief Ganondorf exposed the location of the sacred realm, and obtained the Triforce. He became the great demon king Ganon, and he intended to attack Hyrule and make it his own. Up to this point, the legend describes the events detailed in the manual of A Link to the Past, with a new addition. We now learn that the sages sealed away the Trifles in the Sacred Realm following a conflict for the Trifles. This was the Trifles War, the conflict we spoke of earlier when speaking of Twilight Princess, an event which we now know took place in both timelines' histories. This means the Triforce was present in the land of Hyrule before being sealed in the Sacred Realm, which correlates with what is said in Twilight Princess, with the war taking place in the Sacred Land of Hyrule, as well as the Triforce itself being in the regular realm at the end of Skyward Sword, not in the Sacred Realm. At the time, Hyrule fell into the hands of the great demon King Ganon, but due to the guidance of the princess, a hero arose. This segment recalls the start of the events of A Link to the Past. It's said that, by the combined power of the Seven Sages and the hero, Ganon was sealed. This is where things begin to deviate slightly. For one, Ganon seemed to be destroyed at the end of A Link to the Past. The paintings within Hyrule Castle also depict Seven Sages alongside Link and Zelda. This, however, is not how it was in A Link to the Past. If you recall, during A Link to the Past, Zelda, alongside six other maidens, were the descendants of the sages. However, this is a legend. The people of Hyrule heard legends of the descendants of the seven sages, aiding a hero in sealing Ganon, but they didn't know one of these sages was actually Princess Zelda herself, nor the descendants of the sages being maidens. We also know canonically that tales passed down from mouth to mouth are the least reliable way to keep information, as told to us by Fai in Skyward Sword. History is being misremembered here. Ganon, however, 
could have been sealed at the end of adding to the past. As like Redcon as before, it was believed that he was killed by Link, although him being killed still counts as a seal, as his spirit would remain trapped in the underworld until revived. And along with Ganon's seal, the trifles were split into three and put to rest. One piece together with the great demon King Ganon, one with the Hyrulean royal family, and the other one with the spirit of the hero. After Ganon is sealed, the Triforce is split. This event could take place an unknown amount of time later. We know the Triforce was together in Hyrule Castle during the events of the Oracle Games, which makes sense considering Link obtained the full Triforce from Ganon after defeating him, and it isn't until after Ganon is sealed that the Triforce is split, and as fate would have it, if one piece is with the bearer of wisdom and another with the bearer of courage, the last piece would find its way to the bearer of power, Ganon, even if he's sealed away, a rule of the Triforce which was established in Ocarina of Time. As for how much time passed between A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds, in deleted dialogue from old footage of the game, Sahasrala says that, long before my grandfather's time, and his grandfathers before him, around the time his grandfather was alive, there appeared a suspicious priest who plotted the resurrection of the demon king, Ganon. Then Ganon's seal was undone, and this kingdom of Hyrule was ruined. Even though this line was removed, the intention of the developers that the games were separated by six generations is clear, which would be an estimated time jump of 120 years. With the addition of the lore of A Link Between Worlds, the timeline would look like this. With A Link Between Worlds taking place six generations after A Link to the Past, and with the Triforce War taking place long before the events of the Seal War. Breath of the Wild, the latest entry in the series thus far, released alongside the Nintendo Switch on March 3rd, 2017. This game is set in the distant future, long after Ocarina of Time and any of the other games in the series, which by this time have all been condensed into what's known as the Era of Myth. 100 years before the events of Breath of the Wild, a catastrophic event took place which ravaged the Kingdom of Hyrule, known as the Great Calamity, where Ganon, not transformed into a cataclysmic horror known as Calamity Ganon, returned after having last been seen 9,900 years before the Great Calamity, 10,000 years prior to the events of Breath of the Wild, where he was sealed by a princess with the blood of the goddess and a hero wielding the Master Sword, aided by an army of robots known as Guardians, as well as titanic mechanical behemoths known as Divine Beasts, built by the technologically advanced Sheikah piloted by warriors of each tribe that came to be known as champions. But rather than resealing Ganon, trying to repeat history by unearthing the technology to use it against him, Ganon instead corrupted the guardians and the divine beasts and turned them against the kingdom. From the trailers of the sequel to Breath of the Wild, we learn that Ganon was sealed deep under Hyrule Castle all this time, with Calamity Ganon and his blights merely being a phantom of Ganon, an apparition formed from his pure concentrated hatred, a substance known as malice, after thousands upon thousands of years of being sealed in agonizing pain. We know for a fact that Breath of the Wild takes place an unknown amount of time after any of the games of the series, but in which timeline specifically? As stated before, it is set long after the events of Ocarina of Time, this removes the possibility of it being on the timeline where A Link to the Past and the original Lane of Zelda are located, and there's in-game evidence to support this. For one, the Sora are not monstrous in Breath of the Wild, unlike all the Sora seen in this reality. Gorons are long gone in Hyrule in this timeline, despite the Gorons thriving in Ocarina of Time's reality. We are also told of events specific to Ocarina of Time and not a link to the past or any subsequent game of that timeline in Breath of the Wild, 
and while there is locations referencing games from that timeline, those locations would exist in both realities, and are also mere easter eggs placed by the developers. With this timeline out of the way, we still have two timelines after Ocarina of Time, the child timeline and the adult timeline. Let's first look at the adult timeline. For one, the Koroks and Rito, two races that first appear in the Wind Waker, both being evolutions of the Kokiri and Sora respectively, show up in Breath of the Wild. The direct mentions of events in Ocarina of Time seem to reference those that took place in the adult timeline, specifically the one where Ruto awakened as a sage and aided the Hero of Time in sealing Ganon away. Unlike it happening in games from the other reality, there are locations which reference this timeline branch, like the names of the islands from Phantom Hourglass in the Laniru wetlands, which, once again, are merely references. However, Wind Waker's story brings a clear problem to the placement of Breath of the Wild in this timeline. Hyrule was completely flooded, and not only was it flooded by the gods, the King of Hyrule later made a wish to the Triforce to completely destroy the kingdom. Hyrule, as we knew it, ceased to exist in this timeline, with a new Hyrule Kingdom being built in a completely new continent during the events of Spirit Tracks, set a hundred years after the events of the Wind Waker. The Koroks in Wind Waker had a mission to plant trees across the many islands to one day unite them all, but this would not bring the old Hyrule back. Either the islands, once being the peaks of the largest mountains in Hyrule, connect, creating a new landmass somehow, or they'd have to drain the entire ocean to uncover Hyrule once again, which would affect every other kingdom and country in the world as a result, unless Hyrule, instead of actually being flooded, was sunk beneath the waves. Not only that, but the Koroks would be going against the very wish of the Triforce, and by extension, the gods, by trying to unflood the kingdom itself. Breath of the Wild can't therefore take place in this timeline. This brings us to the only remaining timeline, the Child Timeline, where things become much more interesting when we take a closer look. First, we have landmarks and locations that appeared in Twilight Princess directly, such as the Bridge of Hylia, a large bridge going over Lake Hylia which was only seen in Twilight Princess. All other games did not have this bridge. We even see that this bridge was rebuilt, as it is twice as large as the one we previously saw in Twilight Princess, as the lake grew in size substantially, eventually causing the collapse of the old bridge and the construction of the new one. Then we have the Arbiter's Grounds, also a location from Twilight Princess, returning in Breath of the Wild's Gerudo Desert as mere ruins. This was the location where the Mirror of Twilight was once stored. Then. We have Hyrule Castle Town, Hyrule's capital city, which resembles the castle town we last saw in Twilight Princess, but larger in scale, with the same type of fountain in the middle, leading straight to the gate of Hyrule Castle, rather than a field between the castle and the town like in Ocarina of Time or the Minish Cup, or no castle town being present in A Link to the Past and its subsequent games. Sora's domain grew much larger in size continuing developing its beautiful architecture from the last time we saw it in Twilight Princess. And Goron City continued its mining operations that we last saw the Gorons perform in Twilight Princess, with the Gorons also building metallic bridges and pathways just like how they did during the era of Twilight, the only other game besides Breath of the Wild where they did so. There is also stone monuments of various Goron figures from Goron history. We first have Daruk, the Goron champion from 100 years ago, but we also have a few others from previous games of the series, those being Darmani and the Goron eldest son from Majora's Mask, a game taking place in the child timeline following Ocarina of Time, and Go Koron, one of the four Goron elders from Twilight Princess, also in the child timeline. We know that these are the actual characters, as the artist himself pointed out in his art station page that Nintendo sent him the posed 3D models of the characters so he could then create the 3D sculptures of these mighty Gorons. 
and during the ceremony where Zelda blessed Link with the Master Sword, she indirectly mentioned Skyward Sword, Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess in that order, with Daruk gripping his fist as Zelda mentioned the Embers of Twilight, likely remembering the horrific tales of the Shadow Invasion and how their patriarch became a terrifying flaming monster during that era. She also mentions two other events after this, sailing the seas and obtaining the gold of the gods, which are also references to the Wind Waker and a link to the past. But since Zelda mentions these events directly, and they seem to be in chronological order, these events of a hero sailing the sea and a hero obtaining the Triforce could be unseen events that take place after the events of Twilight Princess. As for the Ritu and Koroks, Twilight Princess HD had a depiction of the Rito and the Sora together in a mural in Haru Castle Town, meaning they came to exist sometime between Ocarina of Time and before Twilight Princess, and the Kokiri would eventually evolve into the Koroks over time, once they left the forest, as told to us by Anuma. The Koroks would simply be hiding in the world, just like how they did in the Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild due to their timid nature. Hence, why we don't see them in Twilight Princess. With all of that said, Breath of the Wild can only exist in one timeline, the Child Timeline, long after Twilight Princess, with the Great Calamity taking place 100 years before, the Ancient Calamity 9,900 years before that, and the ceiling of Ganon deep underground as seen in Breath of the Wild 2 even further back with an unspecified amount of time between that event and the last game of the known timeline. And with Breath of the Wild covered, we conclude the mainline games. On January 14th, 1987, due to the massive success of The Lane of Zelda, Nintendo released a sequel for the game. The Adventure of Link. It is in this game they further develop the lore of Hyrule presented in the Lane of Zelda, introducing a third piece of the Triforce, the Triforce of Courage, hidden within the Great Palace by a King of Old, an old relic which the game will revolve around finding. It also introduced the idea of Impa's family serving the royal family for generations, which will be further expanded upon in greater detail in games to come and established that the Triforce was passed down within Hyrule's royal family for generations. We learn of a princess that was cursed into an eternal slumber by an evil magician in an attempt to find the whereabouts of the Triforce of Courage hidden by the king, and this tragedy would lead to all the future princesses being named Zelda. The game's manual revealed that many seasons had passed since Ganon's defeat, as well as Link now being 16 years old. It wouldn't be until the release of Ocarina of Time 3D that Shigeru Miyamoto would reveal the age of Link in the original Legend of Zelda, being that of 12 years old. This would place the adventure of Link four years after the original Legend of Zelda, with the tragedy of Zelda I happening long before the Legend of Zelda, but long after A Link to the Past, as well as A Link Between Worlds. On June 6, 1993, Nintendo would release Link's Awakening, a direct sequel to A Link to the Past, which followed the subsequent adventure of the same Link, after his defeat of Ganon, where he found himself stranded on the mysterious tropical island of Koholint. This happened after his ship was destroyed in a violent storm during his return journey from distant lands where he traveled to enhance his skills to prepare for future calamities. It's here that Link would come face to face with great perils to awaken the Windfish, a deity who succumbed to the nightmares of his own mind, creating an illusory island in the seas south of Hyrule that would banish upon his awakening. This places Link's awakening directly after A Link to the Past. Majora's Mask, released on April 27, 2000, 
as a direct sequel to The Lane of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Several months after rescuing Princess Zelda and saving the land of Hyrule, Link embarks on a personal journey to find his lost friend Navi, accidentally finding himself on the mysterious parallel world of Termina, after being ambushed by the Skull Kid wearing the titular Majora's Mask, where he learns of a terrible fate that will befall the inhabitants of the land in three days when the moon crashes down into Clock Town. This game set forth the beginning of a new timeline, one where Link warned the royal family of Ganondorf's plans, changing history from that point onwards, which would then lead to Ganondorf's execution years later and the shadow invasion led by Sand. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass released on the Nintendo DS on June 23, 2007. This game is not long after the events of Wind Waker, opening with a recap of the events of the Wind Waker, likely starting a few months after they set sail to find a new land and establish the new kingdom of Hyrule. Link and Tetra are taken into the mysterious world of the Ocean King, terrorized by the sinister ghost ship created by Bellum, a phantom demon who threatens to feed on the life force of all of the inhabitants of that world's islands. Thus, this game is set between The Wind Waker and its sequel, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Two years after the release of A Link Between Worlds, on October 22, 2015, Nintendo revealed Triforce Heroes, a multiplayer Zelda in a similar vein to the Four Swords series, featuring three links instead of four. The events of Triforce Heroes take place several years after A Link Between Worlds, featuring the same hero who, for unknown reasons, ventured into the Kingdom of Hytopia, a land centered around fashion, where their beloved Princess Styla was cursed into a horrid tight suit by a witch from the Drablands. And so, Triforce Heroes is set a few years after the events of A Link Between Worlds, featuring the same Hyrulean hero. With this game out of the way, we end the section of the direct sequels, and we move on to the standalone Zelda titles, the Oracle series. On February 27th, 2001, the linked games Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages were released, developed by Flagship, a subsidiary of Capcom. These games like we've seen with Ocarina of Time, went through various changes during development, starting as a remake of the original The Legend of Zelda, with Capcom being asked to develop six Zelda games for the Game Boy Color, two based on early installments, and four original entries, with this idea later being reworked instead into a trilogy of games that came to be known as the Triforce series, each based on one of the pieces of the Triforce, and each focusing on a unique gameplay element, with these three games being linked to one another, with the player being able to choose which one to play first. However, due to the limitations of the hardware and the difficulty of coordinating the three games, the idea was reduced to a duology rather than a trilogy, resulting in Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, with the third game, Oracle of Secrets, being cancelled. Yoshiki Okamoto, the then head of Capcom's screenwriter subsidiary flagship, revealed in an interview that the Oracle games were intended to be set between two previously released Zelda games. And apparently, there exists an old 64 Dream magazine from Japan, a magazine which we've been trying to locate but we've, as of late, been unsuccessful, where they confirm that the Oracles are indeed a sequel to A Link to the Past, as well as a prequel to Link's Awakening, and both games support this claim. When we take a look at the manual of Link's Awakening, we learn the following. You recovered Harold's piece from the evil clutches of the King of Evil, Ganon. However, without time to enjoy the peace of mind you obtained, you set sail on a journey of training to prepare for new calamities. One day, when your training in foreign countries was over, you were on your way sailing back to beloved Hyrule. 
in the linked ending of the Oracle Games. Link sets sail from Hyrule on a sailboat. We know this is from Hyrule, as we can see a castle in the distance. A castle which does not exist in Holodrum, nor in present Labrina, as Ambi's palace from past Labrina no longer exists. This scene, of course, takes place after the defeat of Ganon. The boat we see at the end of the Oracle Games is the very same boat we see at the start of Link's Awakening, the sprite being the exact same only with the sails opened as he sets off, and closed when he is struggling during the violent storm at the start of Link's Awakening as he returns to Hyrule. Bosses such as Facade, Big Tail, and the forms of Ganon and Aghanim during the Shadow Nightmare final boss fight of Link's Awakening make sense as these evil entities appeared in both A Link to the Past and the Oracle Games, now returning as a reflection of Link's fears on Koholint Island. In fact, the games reused the art style and assets from Link's Awakening, incorporating enemies, characters and events seen on both A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. For instance, Zelda's sprite in the Oracle Games is Marin's sprite but slightly altered as a callback to when Link mistook Marin for Zelda after awakening in Koholint Island. Even the design of Link in the artwork of the Oracle Games was directly based on the design from Link in A Link to the Past, with a slightly updated design using elements from the Hero of Time, which had become quite popular by then. And, interestingly enough, in the remake of Link's Awakening for Nintendo Switch, the design of Link has been updated to look identical to that of Link's design in the Oracles. Not only that, but the art book of Link's Awakening for Switch even has concept art of Link's shield, which depicts both the shield seen in A Link to the Past as well as that from the Oracle games. It's undoubtedly the same Link. Something similar can be seen with Hyrule Castle, which also shares the design from Ocarina of Time. Despite the fact that these two games can be played in any order, we can actually deduce which game would happen first. After all, one order must take place for history to continue. And we can figure this out when we look at how things change and carry over from one game to the other. While both games have similar events playing in both Link versions, such as a rematch with King Moblin, Princess Zelda arriving in each game's respective country, an encounter with Vire, Zelda being captured by Twinrova, and then the boss fight against Ganon. The linked version of Oracle of Seasons, that is, Oracle of Seasons after playing Oracle of Ages, has the most substantial side quests than in the inverse order, with almost all of them continuing storylines first established in Oracle of Ages, such as Queen Ambi reuniting with her long lost lover Kappen or Asura traveling to Holodrum from Labrina to seek out a new home by orders of King Sora, a Goron in Holodrum uncovering the secrets of his Goron ancestors from Labrina, who happens to be the Goron Elder from Labrina, and many more examples, with even Onox, the villain of Oracle of Seasons, making a remark on how you defeated Veran, while Veran makes no remark on how you previously defeated Onox. Characters from Oracle of Seasons who show up in the linked Oracle of Ages don't continue any real story arcs established in the previous game, unlike the linked Oracle of Seasons. It is for these reasons that Oracle of Ages must take place before Oracle of Seasons. Not only does it lead to the same conclusion, the defeat of Ganon, but it concludes storylines that would not be completed in the inverse order. With all of this reasoning, the timeline would look like this, Oracle of Ages coming before Oracle of Seasons, and both games being set between A Link to the Past and before Link's Awakening. With these two games out of the way, we now move to the fourth and final section of the video, the Four Swords series. On March 14, 2003, Four Swords released alongside A Link to the Past for the Game Boy Advance, as a package known 
as A Link to the Past and Four Swords. This game, developed by Capcom, introduced Vati as a new main antagonist to the Zelda franchise, a being who, according to the backstory of the game, once terrorized the villages of Hyrule and kidnapped many beautiful maidens until a mysterious hero wielding the titular Four Sword, a blade similar to the Master Sword with the ability to split the user into four identical copies of himself, sealed him within the blade, now enshrined in the Four Sword Sanctuary, built by the people of Hyrule in honor of this mysterious hero. This game centers on the escape of Vati from his seal, who came as Princess Zelda and takes her to his palace high atop the clouds, with Link wielding the Four Sword, venturing to his domain and resealing him once again. On March 18th, 2004, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, a direct sequel to the Game Boy Advance title Four Swords. It's with this game where we really begin to deviate from the timeline placement proposed in Hyrule Historia. The Historia placed Four Swords Adventures at the end of the child timeline, after the events of Twilight Princess, with Ganon in that game supposedly being a reincarnation, a new Ganondorf born after the one in Twilight Princess died at the hands of the Hero of Twilight. The idea of this Ganondorf being a reincarnation is not only contradictory to every other game in the series, as Ganon's spirit lingers in the underworld until it's brought back through some sort of ritual, such as Twin Rova using the Dark Rites to bring him back, or Ganon's demons hunting Link down in the adventure of Link to use his blood to resurrect him. But the timeline placement is directly contradicted by the game itself. You see, in the prologue of Four Swords Adventures, we are retold not only the events of the mysterious hero who saved the kidnapped girls and first sealed Vati in the Four Sword, but also the events of Four Swords itself, where Link, Princess Zelda's childhood friend, used the Four Sword, rescued her, and resealed Vadi within the Sacred Blade. We are then told that following this conflict, everyone believed that peace had returned to Hyrule, until dark clouds began covering it. During an interview with Game Informer a year later, Eiji Aonuma, the producer of the Zelda series, revealed that Four Swords was thought to be the oldest tale in the Zelda timeline at the time, placing it before Ocarina of Time, which previously held that title with Four Swords Adventures taking place some time after that. Four Swords Adventures simply can't take place after Twilight Princess, as shown in the Hyrule Historia, as there would have been the Hyrulean Civil War, the events of Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf's invasion, which led to his execution, and then the shadow invasion of the Twilight, which plunged Hyrule into perpetual darkness with demons terrorizing its inhabitants. That is not a period of peace. Those are four separate conflicts taking place over a span of many hundreds of years. Link and Zelda in Forces Adventures not only know each other from the very beginning, but they share the same designs as previously seen in Four Swords, because they are the same Link and Zelda from Four Swords. In fact, the prologue mentions the hero of the Four Sword by his name, Link rather than being vague like all the other games of the series when they refer to a hero different from the current hero, which they do in the prologue with the mysterious hero who first sealed Vati many years ago. But we still have to connect these games to the others. Remember, Four Souls was the earliest story at the time, and since Four Souls Adventures is a direct sequel, it would therefore be the second earliest story at the time. Four Souls Adventures actually gives us all the information we need to properly place both games in one of the two branches. Ganon in Forces Adventures was known as the Gerudo Chief Ganondorf, who ventured out of the desert to find the Great Pyramid, which stored the Dark Trident, a powerful weapon which transformed him into the evil King Ganon. In Ocarina of Time, however, the origin of Ganondorf is vastly different, and no one seems to know who he is, not even the King of Hyrule with Princess Zelda having her suspicions. Ganon wrecks havoc in Hyrule in Forces Adventures. If Forces Adventures took place before Ocarina of Time, he would be remembered. This points towards Forces Adventures being before A Link to the Past, where Ganon is seen repeatedly wielding a trident in all games following A Link to the Past as his signature weapon. A weapon which gets its origin in Forces Adventures, 
as well as sharing the Blue Demon Ball design as all the games in that timeline, unlike Ocarina of Time, and later Twilight Princess. If Ganon in Forces Adventures is in this branch, it would mean that Ganondorf in both Forces Adventures and Ocarina of Time would be the exact same man, just in different parallel realities, not a reincarnation as proposed in Hyrule Historia. This would also mean that Twin Rova from Oracle of Ages and Seasons will be the same Twin Rova from Ocarina of Time, but also from a parallel reality, being Ganondorf's surrogate mothers in both. But this is only one of many pieces of evidence pointing towards Four Swords Adventures being set before the events of A Link to the Past. Not only does Four Swords Adventure serve as an origin to Ganon's trident, it also serves as an origin to both the Quake Medallion and the Bombos Medallion, two magical artifacts first introduced to us in A Link to the Past, which had no backstory until Four Swords Adventures, where we meet their creators, a set of mages who enchanted these medallions with their magic. Another connection between these two games is the six Shrine Maidens from Four Swords Adventures, with the seventh being Princess Zelda. Just like how in A Link to the Past, there were six Maidens, with the seventh being Zelda. All being kidnapped by the main antagonist and placed in numerous dungeons across Hyrule. Speaking of Hyrule and its dungeons, the layout of Four Swords Adventures map bears a striking resemblance to the one seen in A Link to the Past. We have Hyrule Castle in the center, Death Mountain at the top, with Kakariko Village to its west, the Desert of Doubt, called the Desert of Mystery, sharing the same exact name as A Link to the Past in Japanese, being southwest, and the Eastern Temple being, well, to the east. Frozen Hyrule would therefore be where the Great Swamp, known in Japan as the Prairie Shrine, lies in A Link to the Past. And we learn in Four Swords Adventures this region of Hyrule was cursed by Ganon to be in perpetual winter, returning to its former self at the end of the game, which we see in the credits when one of the maidens in their spirit form flies over the region, seeing it filled with lakes and puddles of water, just like the region in A Link to the Past. The Light World dungeons from A Link to the Past also make a return in Four Swords Adventures, sharing the same tile sets and assets as those used in A Link to the Past. For starters, we have the Eastern Temple, sharing the same Japanese name with the Eastern Palace from A Link to the Past, as well as its tiles and assets. The Tower of Flames, which has the same tiles as the Tower of Hera, both being located on Death Mountain. The Desert Temple, sharing the same Japanese name with the Desert Palace from A Link to the Past, and both being located in the Desert of Mystery. Four Swords Adventures also had Ganon absorbing the magic of Hyrule, such as the power of the Shrine Maidens. This draining of Hyrule's power could very well have led to the loss of the Hylian bloodline, later mentioned in A Link to the Past. Four Swords Adventures was also heavily inspired by the music and graphics of A Link to the Past reusing many musical tracks, as well as being a perfect blend between the art style from Four Swords and that from A Link to the Past, a transitional art style between the two, with Four Swords being its prequel and A Link to the Past being its sequel. And to top things off, Four Swords for the Game Boy Advance was released alongside a re-release of A Link to the Past. In this re-release of the game, the Four Sword can be found within a secret dungeon in the Dark World, where the Four Sword is shattered into four. At the end of Forces Adventures, Ganon is sealed within the Four Sword by the Maidens and Zelda. However, as we know from magical seals in the series, they don't last forever, and he who was sealed eventually breaks out. Considering Ganon entered the Sacred Realm and transformed it into the Dark World later down the line, it's likely that not only he broke out from the Four Sword, likely causing it to shatter into four, but that he took it into the Dark World to prevent a hero from using it against him, as by that time he would have been unaware of the existence of the Master Sword, as no hero would have faced him with it yet. Forces Adventures also tells us of the sealing of a dark tribe long before the events of Forces Adventures, who invaded Hyrule and was subsequently sealed inside the Dark Mirror. This event would take place before Forces Adventures 
and by extension, Four Swords. Considering Aya Kyogoku wrote both Forza's Adventures and Twilight Princess, and Twilight Princess came after Forza's Adventures, it's definitely possible that not only did Forza's Adventures inspire the mirror of Twilight and the Twilight, but the interlopers and this dark tribe mentioned in Forza's Adventures may be one and the same. Four Swords had a dark tribe who invaded Hyrule and was sealed within a dark mirror. And Twilight Princess also had a dark tribe who invaded Hyrule during the Triforce War and was sealed within the Shadow Mirror. These events are clearly parallel to one another. And as we know there was a Triforce War canonically mentioned in A Link Between Worlds, this invasion would have taken place during the Triforce War. We believe this event to take place after Vati's sealing, parallel to the Triforce War from the other reality. The main difference being that in the timeline of Forza's adventures, the war would end much sooner, and not be prolonged. We even meet Keipora Geibora during Forza's adventures, a character which was very much alive during the events of the Triforce War and Ocarina of Time. With all this out of the way, the timeline would look like this, with Forza's adventures taking place immediately after the events of Four Swords, and centuries before the events of the imprisoning war, with the Triforce War taking place in the centuries between the sealing of Vati and the events of Four Swords, being parallel to the Triforce War of the Ocarina of Time reality. On January 10th, 2005, The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap was released on the Game Boy Advanced as a prequel to Four Swords, serving as the first game in the Four Swords trilogy chronologically, going over the origin of the Four Sword, once known as the Picari Blade, as well as that of the Wind Mage Vati, once a member of the tiny Picari race, now transformed into a demon. We learn of the origin of the Palace of Winds, the previously established home of the Wind Mage Vati during Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures, now revealed to have been built by the enigmatic Wind Tribe, a tribe who built many technological constructs with the help of the Picori, and, after mastering the winds, raised their palace of winds and began living high above the clouds. We also learn of a conflict that took place long before the events of the game, where a Hylian that came to be known as the Hero of Men, wielding the Picori blade and the sacred golden light of the force handed to him by the Picori in their hour of need sealed away the monsters that plagued the land within a chest, in a conflict that has been dubbed the War of the Bound Chest. One thing to note is the similarities between the Wind Tribe from the Minish Cup and the Uka from Twilight Princess, both being technologically advanced tribes adept in magic, who had close relationships with the royal family of Hyrule and who long ago raised their civilizations to the skies of Hyrule. It may be possible that, just like how the Interlopers and the Dark Tribe from Forza's Adventures may be the same tribe, that the Wind Tribe and Uka may also be the same. We learn from Shad in Twilight Princess that the Uka raised their civilization with the birth of the Hylian people, which rather than being the actual race, that being human, as clearly seen in Skyward Sword, he refers instead to the Hylian culture, born with the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule whom the Uka had a part in creating. Thus, if the Uka and the Wind Trap are the same tribes, or parallel, they will have reasoned with the establishment of Hyrule Kingdom, which may or may not have been during the rule of King Gustav, the deceased king we meet in the Minish Cup, who was close friends with the Wind Tribe. With the Minish Cup, the timeline will look like so with the Minish Cup taking place sometimes after the events of Four Swords, and the War of the Bound Chest taking place centuries before the Minish Cup. With this game, we've covered all the main games of the series. As we have them right now, these two realities could, in theory, exist separately, sorting the games nicely into the 2D and 3D titles respectively with an unseen origin of the Master Sword, parallel to Skyward Sword, taking place in A Link to the Past reality. And while this is theoretically possible, we believe that the creation story and the events of Skyward Sword are a shared point in each of both realities' histories, so there must be a timeline split sometime after Skyward Sword. 
to try and fit a link to the past and the older games into the timeline and attempt to solve the circumstance. Haro Historia proposed an imaginary event where the hero of time from Ocarina of Time had to die during the final confrontation with the demon king Ganon in order for an entire timeline branch to come into existence. However, there was no evidence in-game that that would ever happen, nor any in-game cutscene that showed this. Yet alone all the contradictions that the story of Ocarina of Time presented in regards to the backstory of A Link to the Past we've mentioned earlier in the video. However, we do have a game that has a canonical cutscene that could create a new timeline branch, a branch where Link would canonically fail to save Princess Zelda, and that is, believe it or not, the Minish Cap. In Dark Hyrule Castle, the final dungeon of the game taken over by Bati, as you climb your way towards the highest tower of the palace, a bell begins to toll. Link has to reach Vati before the bell tolls three times, which leads to the final battle and subsequent defeat of Vati, saving Princess Zelda and the end credits. However, if you fail to reach Vati before the third bell tolls, Vati proceeds to drain Zelda's force from her, becoming unstoppable. This. Unlike the proposed defeat of the Hero of Time in Haru Historia, is a real, sin bad ending. And if we use this, we can link both the reality of A Link to the Past and the reality of Ocarina of Time to the Minish Cap, with the timeline split being both the true and bad endings of the game. The true ending would lead to Vati being completely destroyed, and with Vati dead in this branch, there would be no more conflicts with the Wind Mage and the next game in this timeline would be Ocarina of Time, thousands of years in the future. The bad ending, however, would instead lead to Vati, now too powerful to be destroyed, being sealed within a foresword after he rampages across the land of Hyrule, terrorizing its citizens and kidnapping beautiful maidens, an event we learn of in both Four Swords and Forces Adventures with that mysterious unknown hero perhaps being the hero of the Minish from the Minish Cup himself. From there, Four Swords, Forces Adventures, A Link to the Past and all the subsequent games will continue on. As a side note, we would also like to mention a similar bad ending that exists in Skyward Sword, where the imprisoned reaches the Sealed Temple, which will lead to the Sealed One devouring Hylia's soul from Zelda reviving the Demon King demise and resulting in the end of the world, the ultimate calamity, where, as the old Impa says, all is lost. These sort of bad endings exist in more games than one, such as Termina being destroyed by the moon in Majora's Mask, offering alternative outcomes which are unfavorable to the hero and the Hyrule as a whole, thus leading to a game over but the world's history will continue on past what we see, under the rule of evil, whether permanent or temporary. As mentioned previously, the Triforce War would take place between the events of Vati's ceiling and Four Swords. Before the Minish Cup, aside from the War of the Bound Chest, there was no mention of the Triforce or a war of catastrophic proportions like the Triforce War. By then, the Triforce was hidden elsewhere in Hyrule, under the protection of the royal family of Hyrule. We know that the Triforce War began once rumors of the existence of the Triforce and its power to grant wishes spread across the kingdom. In the Minish Cup, Vati was searching for the Force, a power very similar to the Triforce handed to the people of Hyrule by the Picori. Vati impersonated the King of Hyrule and ordered the soldiers to search across the kingdom for this Force. Couldn't it be possible? that this search would spark the discovery of the Triforce, and by extension the Triforce War. If this is true, then Vati, regardless of him being sealed or destroyed, would be the one responsible for kickstarting the Triforce War, one of the bloodiest conflicts in Hyrule's history, which we now establish takes place in both realities, which would share the events of the Minish Cup in their history. With this said, the final version of the timeline will look like so, starting with the creation of Hyrule, followed by an era of peace and technological advancements until the Mises invasion and his imprisonment, leading to Skyward Sword and the creation of the Master Sword, the establishment of Hyrule, 
and then the events of the War of the Bound Chest and the Minish Cup. It is here, depending on which ending you obtain, that the timeline splits in two. The bad ending leading to Vati being sealed in a Four Sword, followed by Forsos and Forsos Adventures, continued by the Sealing War, a link to the past, and its sequels, the Oracle Games and Link's Awakening, the Lerulean Invasion centuries later doing a link between worlds, followed by its sequel Triforce Heroes, ending with the original Lane of Zelda and the Adventure of Link, and then the good ending, where Vati will be completely destroyed, leading straight to Ocarina of Time, from which two new branches would come into existence. The adult timeline, continuing the events of the Hyrule abandoned by the Hero of Time, leading to the Great Flood and the events of the Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, and the Child Timeline, where Link was sent back in time to relieve his childhood, and where he warned Princess Zelda of Ganondorf's future plans before setting off to find Navi, leading into Majora's Mask, changing history and resulting in the Gerudo King's failed execution and banishment to the Twilight Realm, leading to Twilight Princess. And at the very end, many eons in the Child Timeline's future, the many conflicts with Calamity Ganon, and the events of Breath of the Wild. And that was our interpretation of the timeline explained. A huge thank you to both Lerudian Historian and Stratilos for helping me with this video. It wouldn't have been possible without their help and ideas. We've had lengthy discussions on the timeline's placements, and it was they who came up with most of the game's placements and the split of the Minish Cup, with my contributions being the dates in between the games and certain placements of the conflicts, as well as the parallel events between the games. Overall, it was a very collaborative process. We would greatly appreciate it if you could share this video with your friends, as a lot of hard work has gone into the research and production of this video. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified of future uploads. Also, consider following me, the Ruling Historian, and Instrutilus on our social media. This has been Sololo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.